Welcome to my channel, Bubblegum Monsters. My name's Peter, and I'm on a mission to get to the bottom of a scary mystery that happened at my school back in 1987 when a friend disappeared. This has led me on spooky scary missions. We've discovered that bubblegum seems to be the key to all strange going-ons that may be connected to monsters. I'm not the only one who knows this. An evil clan called G want the bubblegum for some reason, and seem intent on doing everything they can to get it. With the help of you guys, the BGI's Bubblegum Investigators, I'm going to discover the mysteries, this bubblegum, and hopefully defeat the G-Clan. If you like spooky, scary stories and find the films Goosebumps and Stranger Things, I... What am I reading? Peter, also known as Bubblegum Monsters, created a YouTube channel where he originally would just upload original animated shorts would quickly turn into a titan in the early days of FNAF YouTube, starting with the video Before Real FNAF Bonnie vs. Kids Toby's Lightsaber Skills And almost everything from this point forward is just nuts. Now this is a channel that I was originally going to cover in my other real life FNAF video, but I felt like this channel was interesting enough to warrant its own video entirely. Because, especially for the time period, all this stuff being done by one dude is genuinely really impressive and you'll see that a lot throughout the video. Because like, for low budget YouTube CGI, it looks surprisingly good at times. And also, not good at sometimes, but then you know. I'll be splitting this video up into a few different categories. The first category is going to be about the live action kids content type of videos. The second section is going to be more about random stuff he's done, like the Springtrap reaction videos or the freaking FNAF theme park. Then section 3 is going to be all about the FNAF movie that he made. So with no further explanation needed, I mean, you get this, right? You get, you understand what this is? Alright, good, let's talk about it. Gonna come to the video before we get into the actual meat of the topic, because I want to mention that my new plushie is out right now! The Slinky plush is out right now, it's only gonna be out for two weeks, so act fast. It even comes with a little detachable mini turtle. I am so, 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 so happy with how this plushie turned out, it's just like, perfect, I'm so happy with it. So yeah, those are out right now, the link is in the pinned comment and the description, and onto the video now. So that channel description that I read at the beginning of the video might lead you to believe this is a kind of a lore-heavy series, but if this series actually has lore, it is completely incomprehensible. So if you remember, the first video in the series involves Toby and his lightsaber, whoever Toby is, um, meeting Bonnie from FNAF. And for some reason, Peter here from Bubblegum Monsters has trusted his literal toddler with a lightsaber and it's burning holes in the floor and stuff. I don't know. And then the video ends and Bonnie doesn't even show up. Clickbaiting is one thing, but that is just downright misleading. Now luckily, I think that's the only video on this channel that claims to include FNAF that just straight up doesn't. I assume he changed the thumbnail later on because he has done that before. Like his videos on his fan-made FNAF movie, he changed the thumbnail later on to include the actual movie logo, I assume to just boost views. But an unfortunate thing about this channel is that a lot of the videos appear to just be gone if you look at some of the playlists and you look at the channel page. It seems like a lot of stuff is missing, and it is missing. I'm not sure why he took down so much of his old content, but he did. I found out tips for massive growth on YouTube in one of his playlists. Now, I'm not entirely sure why that's in there, and I don't think it's supposed to be in there, but I feel like that might be a bit indicative of what he was trying to do with his channel, removing all this content. Or he just didn't like the videos anymore. Who knows? So when we look past some more random stuff, we'll find the animatronic interview series, where he, where he has awesome conversations with Foxy from FNAF. He probably interviewed the other characters too, but I mean, that doesn't really matter. R. Peter! Hello, Hello there, everyone! You are one of the scariest characters in Five Nights at Carol. So the first thing that strikes me about these videos is how Peter is, like, talking to this animatronic that isn't actually there, right? But he still positions the microphone at them, which, I guess it adds to the realism, but it makes no sense because you can, like, barely hear him, then Foxy is just, like, ear-blaringly loud. Like, it's really funny for some reason. People, or is it just a natural thing? Oh. Not to mention this foxy voice, I mean, nothing nothing could really beat this in my opinion. 
Rivaled only by the greats like Mob Games, Minecraft, Foxy, or Three Lame Studios. I like to invite some families over to have some fun and to have some pizza. Or especially like children. I also like how he clearly goes into the recording not knowing anything he's going to say as Foxy, so he just clearly improvises it. Like, there's these really long, awkward pauses. You know, he's mad, to be honest. Oh yeah, Elephant in the Room, the model here. Almost all the FNAF models on this channel are original, which I think is pretty cool, honestly. And to be completely honest, they do look a lot better than other fan models at the time. Although I will say the texture choices are kinda weird. Not to say that Scott's made much sense either, cause what the heck are these, but... Freddy and Foxy are straight up made of like, rusty, scratched up metal, which is just like... What? Bonnie is also rusty metal, but there's like paint chipping off of it. And then Chica is just straight up made of concrete. Same goes for Springtrap. But he doesn't really seem to know that they're supposed to be made of fabric because going off of his behind the scenes videos. So for example, Chica would be chipped yellow paint. I sourced some photos of some old rusty metal and then applied some tint of yellow to give it that Chica look. So I just kept this really simple, generally sticking to sort of a rust look and paint cracking. But nonetheless, they're all right models. I think they look pretty good. Now the only video that remains on the YouTube channel that really fits this category is this weird like photo album of the FNAF characters visiting the United Kingdom. And um, I don't really know why he made this. I assume it's just for a little fun little test, but like I don't know why the Ignited animatronics from the Joy of Creation are here. They've only literally only appeared in this video to my knowledge and it's really confusing. But the video does contain this picture, which is pretty awesome. Now, remember how I said a lot of the videos on the channel were taken down earlier? Well, what if I told you that they're still up, but not on the YouTube channel, on the Facebook page? Oh look, there's the origin of that suspicious Bonnie image that was on that one thumbnail. And believe it or not, the actual original video has something to do with lightsabers, so he took down the actual video about this topic. But then he rebranded an older video that had nothing to do with FNAF to have to do with FNAF, even though the same video with the same premise, but actually not misleading, actually exists. Why did he do this? <laughs> so, um, I actually remember this video, like, this... Watching this took back like a bunch of memories that I had completely forgotten and it's very short very simple It's just like the kids start running away from Bonnie screaming cuz he's Bonnie from FNAF. He's terrifying Oh my gosh, it's the thumbnail shot Then they scare Bonnie away with their lightsabers that they just kind of have man When does the bubblegum lore come in? So, like, Springtrap has all these kids in his garage for some reason, and he's got Foxy as, like, his little evil servant. But Foxy doesn't really want to be working for Springtrap, because, you know, he's a bad guy, and he doesn't want to kill these kids. I don't know why Springtrap isn't just doing it himself, but, you know. There's also just, like, this really bad Springtrap voice, and I kind of love it. Like, you cannot understand a single word he's saying. Let's start with this one. <laughs> <laughs> I really enjoyed this characterization of Springtrap and William Afton just being like this weird, this dude who just like verbally harasses children in his garage. So then this random girl shows up and distracts Foxy and then he goes after her instead of the other kids. Early Springtrap tells him to, I don't think this guy can think for himself. Then we get this absolutely nerve wracking chase scene. <laughs> White woman jump scare. Then Chica socks Springtrap right in the jaw in what is probably the coolest cinematic fight in all of history. And then Springtrap gets hit by a car and basically vanishes into thin air afterwards. This is like on the same tier as him getting shot in the twisted ones. 
So then Chica's injured and Faki's like, oh no, Chica. But who cares, okay? Springtrap is dead. He got hit by a car and he's dead now. Is there really any reason to go on now that Springtrap is dead? She's gonna, she's probably gonna come. There she is. I asked you to play fair and you cheated. Oh, she's not like Wait, she's a wash. Okay, well, we'll get into that that later. Who's faster, Foxy or Sonic the Hedgehog? I feel like there's some pretty steep competition here. I wonder who's gonna win. This video is crazy. So, like, Foxy puts, like, oil on Sonic's shoes so he can't, like, run as fast so he starts winning the race. Or Sonic in quotations, because I'm not really sure if those are the real Sonic. He's got, like, this bug-eyed stare and his pupils aren't even touching his eyes. So Foxy is, like, well ahead, and Sonic is understandably pissed by this, because he wanted to win the race. Then Sonic gets his cool green shoes, and he starts catching up, and then Foxy is, like, freaking I don't know, he gets his cool Eggman shoes, I guess. Foxy the Pirate is an affiliate of Dr. Eggman. What does this mean? Where is Sonic meets Knuckles. Then Foxy activates the flying mode in his Eggman shoes. Guys, this is kind of crazy. Then they malfunction and Foxy flies into the air and then he falls and dies. So you obviously didn't go over all of the kids' content on this channel, but I feel like you get a pretty good idea of what it's like from what we looked at. Before we talk about the whole FNAF movie he made, which I'm very excited to talk about, especially because I'm watching the actual FNAF movie tomorrow, just like, a little side tangent. I'm so excited for this movie, I am going to upload a review probably before this video even comes out, but we'll see. How the hell am I supposed to come up with a well-constructed critique of Bubblegum Monster's Springtrap reacts to Poppy Playtime Chapter 2. So, like, he always opens his videos by going, Hello, my little cupcakes. Oh, my little cupcakes. And it's just kind of really uncomfortable. And he also, like, mentions, like, a kid that he has in his room, like, right off camera. And it, these videos have a very, like, strange vibe to them. And I don't know if it's intentional, but it's kind of kind of weird. I'm just doing not catching children. Shut up, Kenny. I've told you to keep your voice quiet while I'm doing the videos. I hate oh, my rotten son, ungrateful boy, ungrateful boy, rotten boy. I like this like um lower quality version of his spring trap model that he like mocaps himself to for these reaction videos. I think it looks really awesome. Oh, okay, I like it. I like the song. I kind of made this entire section just so I could talk about Springtrap Reacts. I, I literally almost forgot to mention the entire like FNAF theme park thing in this video, but I also don't really have much to say about it. It's just kind of funny. Like, um, this did fool some people back in the day, which I think is really funny to look back on because it is pretty obviously fake. But, um, yeah, the Bill's Channel video on this thing is iconic. I'm sure a lot of you guys remember that. The marionette trash cans go, like, insanely hard for no reason. My favorite part of the theme park showcase is the excessive appearance of Happy Frog of all characters. I think that's awesome. There's also, like, this giant spring trap in one of the rides that, like, looks at you. But yeah, um, pretty iconic video, absolutely worth mentioning, but also not a whole lot to say about it, because it doesn't really have, like, a plot or anything, it's just kind of a hypothetical FNAF amusement park that he made. I believe it's edited over a Legoland, which is kind of interesting. I think it's time to talk about his FNAF movie. So something very interesting about this movie is it kind of predicted how the actual FNAF movie would open with how it starts with a previous security guard like trying to survive and then trying to escape and then dying. So pretty cool connection there. He is killed off screen. And now Mike Schmidt is calling for a job and oh my gosh, my Matthew Lillard who? So yeah, Bill from Bill's channel plays the freaking guy who hired- I don't know if he's supposed to be William Afton, he might be, but I don't- I don't know, he's- it's just really funny that Bill from Bill's channel is here. And that he's playing literally the exact same role that Matthew Lillard played at the beginning of the f real FNAF movie. I like his really like crappy green screened office in the background. So now he's at his first night in the job and he meets the animatronics right off the bat and Honestly, the CGI here really isn't that bad. Like, I have 1,000% seen worse in some actual movies and theaters. 
So yeah, the animatronics all look pretty good here. I think particularly Bonnie looks pretty good. Now he makes it to the security office, and it's actually a physical set. It's not CGI or anything, and a lot of this, this is like the only like legit set that they made for this movie. The rest of it's just kind of like a building that they rented out probably. But yeah, the security office set honestly looks pretty decent. I like how it looks a lot. The little like miscellaneous gray paint strokes on the white walls is an interesting choice, but I mean, I don't know. I guess it kind of looks like FNAF 2. This movie actually has the giant like metal security doors, which the, are super unrealistic. I get why they didn't put that in the FNAF movie because they wanted to make it more grounded, but man, I really wish they did because these are really funny. I have never seen these doors adapted to live action in a way where they don't look ridiculous and I love it. So like in this movie continuity, like he, the cupcake is like a toy that his son has that holds like sentimental value for him, which is just so far off from what it is in the actual FNAF movie. I think the most interesting thing about looking back at stuff like this is the stuff that it got right related to the actual movie and the stuff that it didn't get right related to the actual movie. It's genuinely pretty cool how they predicted some stuff. And also very funny to see how different of a direction certain elements went in. But now comes the iconic scene where he goes in the fridge and smells the milk. If you if you know, you know. This is the iconic scene. You've seen this video, this is the one you remember. Then he returns to his office just in time to hear phone guy mention that he needs to conserve power. And then he blames the cupcake for not telling him. Oh, God, you could have told me. Then he goes out to check the dining room to see that Chica's missing, where he says the most iconic line in the movie, in my opinion. Where the hell did the third one go? This is such a badass line. If you don't like this portrayal of Mike, I don't trust you, okay? I don't trust you as a person. Josh Hutcherson is great and all, don't get me wrong, but this one specific British guy just has this aura. What if Chica is in the room with me right now? Oh, oh my gosh! So yeah, um, first proper animatronic encounter of the movie, and it's kind of awesome. Chica like slams her hand on the fridge and stuff. This is kind of peak. Now I think I'm gonna skip over the next scene, not because it's bad or anything, but because there's just, like a there's like a corpse in the scene, and it's kind of gross. It's not necessarily scary, but it's just kind of gross, and I don't want to show that. Same deal as like the guy with the shredded face from the actual FNAF movie, if you know what I'm talking about. Bonnie shows up at his office. He's really scared. There's another iconic line here. Can't stay somewhere else, you dizzy reacher. It's a really awesome shot of him walking down the hallway, but it's like the it's like the actual hallway from the game, and he's just like green screened in. And it looks really, really... F this is like my favorite shot of this whole thing, honestly. Then, like, he ends up in the party room. He's hiding under a table, and Chica's, like, crawling under there with him. <laughs> and then Bonnie's on the other side, and he has a corner, and then he goes out the side, and then he runs away. And there's this really funny shot of them just looking, like, really tiny in the distance in, in the party room. I love, I love this video. This video is amazing. But then our hero ends up cornered by Freddy Fazbear himself. And we get a chase scene, question mark, even though Freddy isn't very fast at all. And then we get the classic, power's almost out, it's almost 6am, is he gonna make it, type of thing that's iconic to FNAF 1, and basically every FNAF game with a 6am timer. And then, ooh, ooh, is he gonna make it? Is he gonna make it? I don't know, I don't know, is he gonna make it? Oh my gosh, I'm so nervous, I'm so, so nervous, please don't let this man die. Oh my gosh, wait, he made it. But in the twisted world of Five Nights at Freddy's, their heart's deepest desires have an unexpected cause. Foxy was in the back of the office, apparently, and kills him, and that's the end of the movie. Can we please send our thoughts and prayers to this portrayal of Mike Schmidt, because I think he needs it. This was a quite an untimely demise, and I don't think he deserved it. But yeah, that was basically the whole rabbit hole of Bubblegum Monsters FNAF, and it's quite an interesting one. This YouTube channel is definitely one that was always very endearing to me when I was younger, so revisiting it was definitely a very interesting experience. And I hope I was able to dig up some repressed memories for you guys as well. So yeah, um, get the plushie, it's out right now, link in a pinned comment, and I, I'll see you next video.